Hello and welcome to Pale Blue Thoughts. Having made a lot of videos on YouTube, most of them controversial per se, I have been responded to with many comments that have been logical fallacies. I intend to look at a few common ones that are often repeated by people who come up with arguments against the contents of the videos. Of course, this is not just limited just to my videos. You will find these being exhibited by many others in our daily lives. Of course, social media is a highly fertile breeding ground for logical fallacies. So I thought, let me start a series where I will describe logical fallacies in detail, one at a time. First, let us understand what a logical fallacy is. A logical fallacy is an error in reasoning that makes your argument less effective and convincing. When you're debating someone, you want to use all the resources at your disposal to convince them that you are right, but you should be careful that you don't end up using a logical fallacy to help you make your point. Some of the common logical fallacies include argumentum ad populum or the bandwagon fallacy, sunk cost fallacy, post hoc ergo propter hoc or after this therefore because of this, argument from authority, circular reasoning, etc. Let us start with argument from authority or the appeal to authority today. Welcome to Pale Blue Thoughts, the channel which promotes scientific temper and denounces pseudoscience. Appeal to authority is a very common logical fallacy used by many people when they try to prove their point. When you are gathering evidence to support your conclusion, you will likely want to cite some experts. They have done research on the subject and know a lot about it. So it makes sense to use their knowledge and opinions to support your own arguments. This is where you need to be careful. If you don't use those experts information correctly or if you assume they are always right because they are experts, you could be falling prey to the appeal to authority fallacy. Now these experts could be a person a group of persons or an institution like a university or a government. Some typical examples can be seen here. A lot of experts support the Save Soil movement by a pseudoscience king Sadhguru, hence the movement has to be right. Sadhguru has said not to eat during eclipses or sleep during Shivratri or that he has done research with aliens. He has a huge fan following of people which includes people from Harvard and MIT, so he has to be right. All the central and state governments support and promote homeopathy, Ayurveda, yoga, etc. So it has to be scientific. Why else would they promote it? Dr. B. M. Hegde has said that modern medicines are all dangerous reductionist chemicals and since he was a medical doctor himself, he should be right. Robert Malone has said that mRNA vaccines are dangerous. He was one of the people who developed the vaccine, so he must be right and so on. Insisting that a claim is true simply because a valid authority or expert on the issue said it was true without any other supporting evidence offered makes your claim an appeal to authority. In its logical form, according to person A who is an expert on the issue of X, if A says X is true, then X is true. This is where one needs to understand the working methods of science. Science does not believe in authorities. Scientific knowledge is best established by evidence and experiment rather than argued through authority and authority has no place in science. For example, Richard Dawkins, an evolutionary biologist and perhaps the foremost expert in the field, says that evolution is true, therefore it's true. When it comes to science, this statement and conclusion does not hold water. Richard Dawkins certainly knows about evolution and he can confidently tell us that it is true but that doesn't make it true. What makes it true is the prevalence of evidence for the theory. If Dawkins failed to provide empirical evidence for evolution, then science would reject the claim even though he may be an expert. One example of the use of the appeal to authority in science dates to 1923, when a leading American zoologist, Theophilus Painter, declared, based on poor data and conflicting observations that he had made, that humans had 24 pairs of chromosomes. From the 1920s until 1956, that is for a whole three decades, scientists propagated this fact based on painter's authority, despite subsequent counts totaling the correct number of 23. Even textbooks with photos showing 23 pairs incorrectly declared the number to be 24 based on the authority of painter. 
painter's influence was so great that many scientists preferred to believe his count over the actual evidence and scientists who obtained the accurate number modified or discarded their data to agree with painter's count. Finally, in 1956, two scientists, Johin Tijo and Albert Levin, used modern techniques to determine the number of human chromosomes to be 23 pairs and proved painter wrong. It is important to note that this fallacy should not be used to dismiss the claims of experts or scientific consensus. Remember, a fallacy is an error in reasoning. Dismissing a council of legitimate experts and authorities could turn good skepticism into denialism. Legitimate appeals to authority involve testimony from individuals who are truly experts in their fields and are giving advice that is within the realm of their expertise, such as an experienced physician giving a patient medical advice. Their talent, training and experience put them in a position to evaluate and report on evidence not readily available to everyone else. But we must keep in mind that for such an appeal to be justified, certain standards must be met. 1. The authority is an expert in the area of knowledge under consideration. The statement of the authority concerns his or her area of mastery. There is an agreement among experts in the area of knowledge under consideration. And number 4. The person provides sufficient evidence to support the claims and the idea being present is falsifiable. Let us take an example. My doctor has said that medicine X will help my medical condition. Therefore, it will help me with my medical condition. Is this a legitimate appeal to authority or a fallacious appeal to authority? First, the doctor has to be a medical doctor. A doctor of philosophy won't do. Second, the doctor has to be treating you for a condition in which he or she has training. It isn't enough if the doctor is a dermatologist who is prescribing you something for lung cancer. Finally, there has to be some general agreement among other experts in this field. If your doctor is the only one using this treatment, then the premise does not support the conclusion. Also, this method of treatment has to be proven scientifically with evidence, that is, through properly done placebo-controlled double-blinded clinical trials and has been peer-reviewed and accepted as scientific. Of course, one must keep in mind that even if these conditions are fully met, that does not guarantee the truth of the conclusion. We are looking at inductive arguments here and inductive arguments do not have guaranteed true conclusions even when the premises are true. Instead, we have conclusions which are most likely true. Science does not make statements about absolute truths. It makes statements based on independently verifiable, repeatable evidences best available at the moment. The scientific method is the single most consistently reliable and best method of discerning the true facts about the universe than anybody has come up with so far. Another aspect of science is that science always considers the validity of the claims and not on the expertise of the claimant. That is why we accepted the works of a patent clerk named Albert Einstein when he proposed a theory that contradicted the theories that were formulated by a person considered the father of modern science, Isaac Newton. If scientists in those days had succumbed to appeal to authority, then the world wouldn't have accepted the works of a person working in a patent office in Switzerland and we would have never had the theory of relativity and the photoelectric effect. The same Einstein had discredited quantum mechanics saying that God doesn't play dice. Had science acceded to the expert and decided that since Einstein wasn't in favor, let us not pursue this field, then we would have lost out on quantum mechanics without which we would not have understood our universe nor would you be holding a mobile in your hand. That is why science has no authorities and doesn't appeal to anyone or more authorities. But if you look at pseudoscience, we see that almost all of them thrive on appeal to authority. Take the case of Hanuman and homeopathy, Ayurveda and Charaka and Sushruta, Yoga and Patanjali. All of the snake oil medical systems base their entire validity on the claims of a few authorities. All religious beliefs are based out of one or two books which they consider as their lifeline. Appeal to authority is what prompts alternate medicine fans to constantly ask the series of questions like, if there is nothing in this form of medicine, why is the government supporting it? I wish they asked their practitioners the method of action of their medical system and compared it with the scientific method instead. In the same way, many people use another logical fallacy called appeal to unknown or anonymous authority. That is what makes certain ex-DGPs of Kerala 
always quote scientists from Harvard University instead of quoting specific sources. Pseudo gurus like Sadhguru and Double Shri's often lean on the ancient wisdom of yogis and munis and never ever quote a valid source for their claims. Appeal to authority fallacy is very often used in marketing and advertisements. Advertising companies believe that people are most likely to trust any figure of authority without knowing whether they are an expert in the field they are speaking on or not. That is why we are showered with ads of toothpaste that 99% of dentists use. Just dress up a model in doctor's clothes and make him or her wear a stethoscope and you are ready to believe that. Yes, doctors might be recommending this toothpaste. We have ads which show movie actors and cricketers promoting products that they have absolutely no expertise on. Yet people fall for it. Reason? Appeal to authority. They might be experts in acting or cricket but appear as experts on products ranging from noodles to fairness creams to skincare to health capsules. I think they are better off endorsing underwear and benions and Zuba Kesari. Now how do we avoid committing an appeal to authority fallacy? There are two easy steps that I see. First, make sure that the authorities you cite are experts on the subject you are discussing. Second, rather than just saying Mr. Authority believes X, so we should believe it too, try to explain the reasoning or evidence that the authority used to arrive at his or her opinion. That way, you have more to go than a person's reputation. It also helps to choose authorities who are perceived as fairly neutral or reasonable rather than people who will be perceived as biased. Always, always quote sources when you make the claim and ensure that the sources are what is accepted by the wider scientific community. Make sure your claims have sufficient evidences to back it up. Always follow evidences. Don't lead the evidences to where you want to go. So to sum up, we rely on experts in almost all areas of our lives to give us the information that we need. But there are times when experts cannot be trusted. It is important to be able to recognize those times when making an argument and when listening to the argument of others. So I hope this video would help you win your next argument by not quoting experts but instead win it on the basis of evidences and facts. I hope this video was interesting to you. Please share this video if you found this information useful. I shall be back with more logical fallacies and other topics related to science. Until then, it's bye-bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.